did the Galactic Federation of Worlds just release its Prime Directive? And why is that important for humanity? You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, social, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. Visit exopolitics.org and sign up to receive our email notifications, news, and information. Be informed and be aware with Exopolitics Today. And now, here's Dr. Michael Sala. Well, it's my great pleasure again to welcome Elena Danan to Exopolitics Today. And Elena has a very important document that she is releasing on behalf of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. It's called the Prime Directive. So welcome, Elena, and great to have you back on the show. Thank you, Michael. Um, a lot of things are happening in the moment, and uh, these are exciting times. They are indeed. And this document you sent me is quite sensational. I mean, there's a, it really gives us an idea of what the Galactic Federation does in terms of interacting with a world like ours. So there's, there's 10 articles in it, and uh, you actually got some commentary from Thorhan on each of the articles. Um, is there anything you want to say before we go through the, through the document, through the Prime Directive itself, in terms of how you got it, why now? Yes, uh, why now? I suppose it is because we need to understand now that things are moving forward. Uh, regarding to cooperation between the Galactic Federation of World and the space programs and Earth, uh, we need now to understand why things are done that way and not another way. As Thorhan said, all the officials in the Space Force programs, well, the high rank officials, not everyone, and some uh, people in the government know about this prime directive, but it is not yet um, disclosed to the public because they don't see the point. But the Galactic Federation, um, some high officials thought that it would be helpful to for the understanding of what is going on. So a few days ago, uh, it was a surprise. Uh, Thorhan contacted me by the implant uh, mind communication and he said I have something for you it's very important and this was coming from the High Commander Adana and she's in charge of the military station of the Galactic Federation of Worlds and I do not know who above her because there were probably people above her who availed this, this decision she wasn't the only the, the person to decide. But anyway, it went through her. And Thorhan dictated me by mind, uh, by telepathy, this text. And I typed it. And uh, I the 10 sections. And I asked if I could now share what I was supposed to do with this. Uh, I said, no, now it is to be shared with the, um, the civilians of Terra. And uh, I said, will I share it with Michael? And we go from there. He said, yes, share it with Michael. It is a gift for you and for him. And you will share it with the world. So here we are tonight. Well, that's wonderful. It's really great that this document that we believe or that you were told is known to senior government officials that have been participating in these agreements and the discussions that are being held above Jupiter, on the moon and elsewhere, now that this is being released into the civilian sector through uh, Thorhan and, and through uh, the Galactic Federation senior leadership that they're approving that, that this is important, that we, the citizens of, of Earth, actually have a right to know about the important guiding principles and documents and the kind of way in which decisions are being made and that this isn't to be 
kept from us because this is, as you know, uh, uh, Earth governments and militaries keep all this information from us. So through you, the Galactic Federation is able to reveal to the rest of us what is really going on. And so this is very exciting, this document. And, you know, I've, I've read through it several times and um, it's something that I think people need to study very closely. And so uh, thankfully we can go through it uh, point by point. It's a, it's a 10, article, 10 articles long, but in there, I think there's enough information to give us an idea of, of how the Galactic Federation interacts with worlds like ours. So very important. So, so thank you for doing that. And thanks to Thorhan and um, others in the Federation for making this information available to uh, the citizenry. Yes, I am very grateful to them. Uh, I want to add that um, this is a text. It, it dictates to me, um, but um, this is how they have it upstairs it's not as a text as something uh, only written it's not written it's holographic it's a holographic it's a spherical device the, the, the this it, it's a little difficult to totally understand it is not how we would have a text of law, of law written flat they have a sphere it's a holographic sphere and the 10 clothes are in it and it's um like this i don't know not know so these these words contain uh holographic explanations that um were not given while he was telling me the the, the the words for words then he had to explain to me what he couldn't pass on to me so that's his commentary that came in the second time second time. i say that's very important so that this is not a document as we think it like written in a text in multiple languages and signed by different delegates. It's more like a holographic document or set of ideas that somehow different civilizations give their assent to when they agree and that they look to this holographic document um, and extract out of it what they need in terms of understanding what the principles are. So, so what we have in, in the text then is, is really kind of like a, I don't know, uh, maybe is it fair to say it's like a, a more like a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional thing. So, so it, it really is like coming through, through you or through your filters, shall we say, would that yes. be correct? Um, that yes. this is, it's coming through you, but but really in, in in its core, it's a it's a hologram that needs to be accessed individually to under be, to be understood fully. Is that how, how does it work? The words are words for words how how it is, and so it the the words are to be taken word for word. Mm -hmm. But then these words carry um, images and emotions or concepts, things that are of the realm of the thought and the mind. Mm -hmm. but the words are the anchor. The words are to be read literally. Mm -hmm. And then when, when you read these words by, by mind, by accessing this device, you, you read the words. It's coming into your mind. You read them word for word in, I don't know in which language, probably the Tami, the language of the, the official language. And um, you have visions coming with it. So that's the things that are attached to these words. He couldn't give them to me, give me only the words. That is why he needed to do the commentaries to explain what these words meant. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you for clarifying that. So these words, as they appear in this document that we are going to read through, is pretty close to exactly what, anyone that's a member of the Galactic Federation, they would see the same words, maybe in their own language, that that's what they would be encountering. So, okay, so shall we go through the document now, just section by section? So uh, I know you have some commentary by Thorhan, so I can read the relevant section and then you can uh, give us the commentary by Thorhan. I think that would be good for the audience. Sure. So it begins. The Prime Directive, Galactic Federation of Worlds, Section 1, or Article 1. 
The Prime Directive is to serve as a moral, ethical guide and legal template. This section is relevant to any situation involving contact in any form between the Galactic Federation of Worlds and primary cultures. The Prime Directive is used as a moral guide regarding to the behavior of the Galactic Federation of Worlds and as a legal tool when a dispute occurs with a third-party civilization. Okay, very good. So that's uh, Thorhan's commentary uh, that you just read there. Yes. And so we understand from that that this is both a moral guide and also a legal tool. Uh, in, so it, it guides members of the Galactic Federation in, in how they interact with different worlds and also legal tool now i'm assuming that would be presumably with those civilizations that are maybe outside of the galactic federation of worlds or also those worlds within the galactic federation that maybe they have a different opinion maybe for example the the pleiadians might have a different opinion with the uh, with those from say Tal talcetti as to how affairs on earth should be should be or activities on earth should be conducted so it, it, so what are we looking at in terms of the moral and the legal aspects here i think there are two things in this first section uh, it is said as a moral it moral ethical guide and legal template so moral ethical guide that's to my understanding uh given as a code of a conduit of, um, of behavior regarding to uh, primary civilizations, how to intervene, what to do, how to manage the, the contact with primary civilizations. That's more of uh, um, a code of behavior. But then it needs to be, it's not just a, an advice, it needs to be like this. Uh, and when there's a conflict, a conflict with uh, either a third, they say, Thorhan said, a dispute uh, with a third party civilization. I mean, uh, a civilization that is probably out of the Galactic Federation of Worlds, uh, not part of it. And like, for instance, the Orion group would be, and uh, that interferes in the development of a culture then this prime directive can be used as a legal template, as a legal tool. Uh, so there are both uh, concepts there, mm -hmm. a moral guide, code of ethics, and a legal tool. Very interesting. So as a legal tool then, so to just say, for example, I mean, it's clearly all those extraterrestrial civilizations that are signatories or part of the Galactic Federation, uh, you know, they would be bound by the prime directive and by all of the articles in it. And so they would have to conform to it. But with the, say, the Orion Collective, uh, yeah. now they would probably consider themselves not bound to the prime directive. So then if it's used as a legal tool, does that mean that there's a kind of like another body, like a higher council, whether we're talking about um, you know, like a sixth dimensional council that arbitrates disputes be between, say, the Galactic Federation and the Orion Council or the Orion Collective. I don't think I, I don't think so. It would be um, it would be said in in this this text. I think this this prime directive stands by itself as a, something that is really an ethic, universal ethics. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it, it gives the right to intervene. And when we will go uh, to the, there's a section, section nine that really caught my attention. And it, it is really about uh, how to deal when uh, a, th a third party civilization uh, like the Orion group, for instance, interferes in a pri primitive, more primitive culture. Well, it, because this prime directive allows the federation to do something about it. And uh, so it would, 
I, I suppose the, the Orion group, for instance, would be um, submit to, to this. Okay. This is All right. So yeah, that's that's something we can bring up again in section nine when we have some practical yeah. examples. Good. All right. So uh, section two, the prime directive is applicable to all cultures in any world that have not yet achieved interstellar travel capacity and have not established an organized continuous relationship with an evolved external interstellar culture. This is uh, quite an important one. So commentary by Thorhan goes as follows. This requires to examine first the grade of the said culture involving a classification scale we do possess. This goes as such. Stage one, developing life forms non-organized in a structured society. Stage two, primary life forms organized in a structured society having developed spiritual concepts. Stage three, interstellar. Culture having reached interstellar capacity and made contact by its own process with another galactic civilization. And stage four, high. Culture having reached six density level and beyond. So these are the four stages uh, by which they classify um, the level of evolution of um, cultures. Okay, very interesting. So we, we have those four stages. And you know, when you look at that, those four stages, uh, clearly uh, w look at stage two, we would say that while well, the earth would be a structured society. You know, definitely, we've developed spiritual concepts with uh, religions, worldwide religions. Now, stage three, interstellar. Now, I, I guess this is where we get into the idea of a of a society that has developed things like warp drive or uh, being able to use portals to be able to travel from solar system to solar system. So now, clearly, publicly, you know, we are not at stage three. You know, we use rockets to get to the moon, to get to Mars through public or national space programs. But of course, we have the secret space programs. So, you know, this is the question is with a planet like Earth, where the majority of the life only uses technologies that put it in stage two, but that there's a small elite that have technologies that put them at stage three. What, what does that make us? We are in transition between stage two and, and three. Not totally stage three, three, I suppose, because it is not official and global that uh, officially and openly we are all faring out of this, uh, the star system. Um, I would say we are transitioning uh, we are transitioning uh, from stage two to stage three because we have interstellar uh, travel with Solar Warden, with, uh, you know, um, even the nefarious dark fleet is interstellar, but that doesn't, that is not part of our culture. It is decided it is something that is going from it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yes, with Solar Warden, we, we start to develop, we have interstellar. They can go out of the star system. Um, so, but that's just secret and just a little group, you know, it's not official. So I think we are just as at the premises of stage three interstellar culture. And then it's interstellar has two uh, uh, things in it, reaching interstellar um, travel capacity, but also um, that the, the the culture has made contact by itself with another uh, galactic civilization, as it said. So this this is tricky because we haven't made contact by ourselves by going by ourselves in spa into space and meeting other cultures. These older cultures have come to us and made contact the Orions, uh, the reptilians, for instance, 
before we were able to do it ourselves. So that has been uh, compromised. So that won't happen because, and then the Federation was also has made, made contact by themselves uh, with us. So making contact by ourselves, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's gone, it's compromised. So, um, so that takes it away. So we are in contact with extraterrestrials already. So mm -hmm. that point is done. Mm -hmm. um, we have interstellar, so, but transitioning. So I'd say we are transitioning. What, that's how I would understand it. What would be your, um, your idea? Yes, I think that's, that's correct. That we're kind of in that some sort of intermediary point between that stage two and stage three, according to this prime directive uh, document that uh, we are, we do have interstellar capabilities, but these are not widely known or shared. By the most part, we're capable only of interplanetary travel. But with what we are witnessing now, you know, this process of uh, the truth being revealed, uh, secret space programs, extraterrestrials, then you know, I could imagine that we will very quickly move as a global civilization into that stage three very, very quickly. So that takes me to section three. Nothing within these articles shall authorize the Galactic Federation of Worlds personnel to intervene in matters which are essentially of the domestic, local, or private jurisdiction of any planetary system or shall require the member to submit such matters to settlement under any articles of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. So commentary by Thoran goes as such. This is about disruptive interference in private affairs of a stage two culture using any section of the prime directive without a veil from the High Council of the Galactic Federation of Worlds, end quote. So um, this is about disruptive interference in private affairs, using um, as cover uh, some elements, some articles of the, the prime directive uh, as an excuse. So that is uh, without having uh, been, uh, been uh, agreed by the, the High Council of the Federation. So okay. that's, yeah, that's how I understand it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very clear. I think it's yeah. self-explanatory, non-intervention, and any disputes or any matters uh, need to be submitted uh, for some kind of uh, arbitration or some kind of settlement. So there, there is a a settlement process. So that so that tells us that the Galactic Federation of Worlds, and and, and maybe Elena, it's probably worth explaining again. Uh, the precise relationship between the Galactic Federation, the Council of Andromeda, and the uh, sorry, the Andromeda Council and the uh, Council of Five, I think it is. Now, the Prime Directive, you know, th this is something that the Galactic Federation abides by. Is it something that it also kind of like applies to these other bodies, the Andromeda Council, or or, do, or the uh, are the Andromeda Council and the Council of Five are these kind of higher density bodies that the Galactic Federation can appeal to for guidance if there are disputes or difficult issues? So some, that's an important clue because I know that the, sorry, <clears throat> the Andromeda Council and the Council of Five are going by the same rules. Although the Galactic Federation of World is the, the one who, who looks after the, the, the prime directive, it's theirs. Well, they created it, in fact. But uh, I know that the Andromedan Council and the Council of Five are going by it too, because they work with the Federation. And uh, so it looks like some galactic uh, law that has been created there. It's very interesting. Um, there is something that, um, th that is a little bit different and very interesting regarding to the Council of Five because they are higher dimensional beings. They are all above sixth uh, density. 
And they use the prime directive a little bit uh, differently um, because they do not do physical contact with uh, level two civilization because six density, you, you are invisible to a stage two civilization, you know. So um, they, they, they interfere more freely, especially in the um, development of human consciousness, uh, the, the, all the starseed programs, all these things, because they can do it discreetly and there is not interference. They can go, come with their ships uh, and do operations on Earth without anybody, anyone seeing them. So um, that is something that is interesting. What is important in this prime directive, what goes first, the main, main topic is interference. That's the thing, interference. Um, so that, that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So it really is the in alignment with a natural law or some sort of universal natural law that, the, that these that this prime directive aligns with that. Okay, so uh, section four. As the right of each sentient species to live following the greater universal law of free will in accordance with its natural and biological cultural evolution is considered sacred, no member or personnel of the Galactic Federation of Worlds may interfere with the normal, autonomous, and healthy development of native life, society, and culture. Such interference includes introducing superior knowledge, strength, or technology to a world whose members and society are incapable of handling such advantages wisely, judged on their present level of spiritual, moral, and technological evolution. Commentary by Thorhan. This is about illegal influence upon the natural development of the global consciousness of a stage two culture end quote so this is about the development of consciousness the global consciousness of a species um, i see here a reference to uh, for instance the great awakening that is happening on earth do they have the right to intervene in this or must they leave the species undergo their transformation and uh, of consciousness you know i think that's what it is about mm -hmm. you think very well, very important I, I like the passage where it says uh such interference includes introducing superior knowledge strength or technology because one of the things i found in my research typically is that these more highly evolved extraterrestrials like they won't hand over uh advanced technologies uh to scientists and engineers from earth what they do is they inspire them with ideas they get the idea or the thought about how to do something complex and that in, that they get guided to something so someone like say uh, nikola tesla albert einstein uh, these people were inspired if you like by the galactic federation to come up with their inventions or their theories rather than the invention or theory being presented to them, which is what I think more manipulative extraterrestrial groups do, like the reptilians and the Orions. They just like, here's the technology, you know, use it. Yes. And uh, the thing is, um, and even though they, when they give the, the nefarious ones, when they give the technology, for instance, reptilian with the, the dog feet, that, that's really direct giving technology. Um, yes, they infringe this law. There are the greys do different. Uh, I, I know the greys and the reptilians, they have different ways of doing. I know the greys will get uh, people from the local culture to make the technology. They will never give a technology. They will get the people to make it. So then there is not giving a technology. They don't infringe any law. Uh, that, that's why I understand, you know, that the greys also go by this 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 prime directive even the, if they are not part of the federation there are too many elements that really uh, concur to, to to that um they they were they are going to uh, give as you say hints the, the 
the good ones and the bad ones, you know, the Federation or the Greys, the Orions, they are, they are going to do the same. They are going to give uh, hints or pieces of equipment and say, figure it out yourself. But they won't give, for instance, the power core or they would give just technology for people to just sort it out and understand it. Um, and they, they, they get human slaves to do the work for them, to build for them. And I've seen that uh, re regularly happening, regularly happening. And one day I, I was with Thoran. Um, he was showing me um, satellites on orbit of Earth put there by, uh, I think it was the Orion group. Um, and uh, I say, why don't you uh, just shoot at these satellites and destroy them? And what he said to me, he said, if the Greys, if the, the Orions had made uh, these satellites, we would destroy them because it's interference, it's, it's, it's uh, infringing laws. But because it has been manufactured by uh, people from Earth, by humans, we cannot destroy it. We cannot destroy human technology. Technology made by humans, we would infringe the law. And I didn't know at the time about all these uh, mm -hmm. details and sections. So that's interesting. There's a good example of this. I remember one of the uh, whistleblowers uh, was an Air Force engineer by the name of Bill Uhouse, And uh, he was involved in building a simulator for the US Air Force in the 1950s based on uh, it was a UFO crash from Kingman, Arizona. And so the, the craft was pretty much intact. So they brought that craft over to, uh, it would have been uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. And so U-House was working on that with other engineers. And he said that there was a gray extraterrestrial called J-Rod. And every so often J-Rod would come when the Air Force engineers got stuck and they would have a meeting and they would say to J-Rod, say, well, this is our problem. You know, we can't solve this problem. How do you do it? He would communicate in this very enigmatic way, like, you know, giving them clues so that they could work it out themselves rather than kind of like doing it. So, yeah, this is exactly the way uh, the greys operate, as, as you say. So that way they can maintain uh, their operations within the parameters of the prime directive but still trying to do something that promotes their agenda exactly as you were just saying with the with the satellites and the mebu yes yes uh so that i think that answers the 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 former questions when we were wondering if the greys are subject to this prime directive yes they are mm -hmm. obviously yeah clearly they are so article five the Galactic Federation of Worlds cannot expose an evolving species to technology that the species has not yet discovered or is currently capable of developing and using. So Thoran said, this is about illegally exposing advanced technologies to the visual percept of a stage two culture. So this is uh, about not showing technology. That's uh, not exposing visually. Right. So I, I'm trying to think of, of an example of technology that would be shown to an evolving species that, that could be very dangerous. So uh, we, we might think of um, some extraterrestrial technology, some advanced technology that could be, say, weaponized, like uh, people have talked about uh, kind of temporal weapons or weapons like uh, scalar weapons and say torsion field weapons or and, and there are other kinds of weapons that I've heard as well toplet weapons that are using some kind of exotic matter that can be very very destructive and so if a world is given this kind of technology too early um, it could be very easily weaponized or experimented upon, causing catas uh, catastrophe. Yes, so I totally agree. And I would say also, I would add that this may also apply to uh, just showing a ship 
hovering in the sky because yeah it said exposing evolving an involving technology uh, a technology from an evol evolved species uh, to a species uh, to the perception of a species who hasn't yet discovered it or cannot understand it i think it's it can apply also as i understand it to um not fly with your ship uh in front of everyone and show a spaceship to everyone uh you know something like that probably. well that's very interesting because i know many who are watching this maybe not everyone <laughs> i know some have not seen the Star Trek series, but in the Star Trek series, for those who have watched it, uh, typically they interpret the, their principle of non-interference as not showing their ships to a society which is like a pre-warp culture, not to show their ships. They keep them uh, far out in orbit. But of course, we know in our history, in our recent history, uh, different extraterrestrial vehicles have been shown a lot. I mean, for example, uh, I know George Adamski from the 1950s has really great, took really wonderful photographs of these uh, cigar-shaped ships and the different scout craft that came out of them, like, he's, like a world-famous series of photos that show a cigar-shaped ship that has scout craft coming out in, in sequence. He, he took photos of that. So in the case of whoever, and I mean, he called them, play, uh, he, sorry, he called them Venus, Venusians, um, people from Saturn and so forth. Now, I assume that they were maybe members of the Galactic Federation or other groups that were revealing themselves to humanity, but, but showing their ships. So yeah, any, any kind of comment about that? Yes, I suppose that um, what Thoran told me once, um, the most most of the ships you see in the sky, you will see it's either from uh, the Orion group or the, the reptilians or either made on Earth, a lot okay. made on Earth. And he said, because we have a rule not to show ourselves as least as possible. Uh, so that, that would explain it. About the cigar shapes, yes, the galactic version used these cigar shapes, but also this is um, um, technology that is that's been really developed in the, the Pleiades uh, cultures, and uh, oh, of course the the, the Ahel from Taigeta they, they, they use it, the Tal use it, but also the the Pleiadians from Alcyon who work with the the Dark Fleet use this ship as well. And they've offered a few of them to the Dark Fleet. So the Dark Fleet has cigar-shaped ships. Um, so that, that's something as well. That well, that's actually a very, very important statement right there because I yes. know a lot of people uh, who have known of the George Adamski contacts and, um, and have seen the photographs. And you know, from that era in the 50s and 60s, uh, people assume that these were positive, benevolent extraterrestrials, but it's very possible that these could well have been uh, extraterrestrials from, say, Elcyon, pretending to be highly spiritual pacifists um, that uh, were trying to influence the culture by showing their ships. That, that, as you say, is not the way the Galactic Federation operates, but those from Elcyon would, would do that because they had an agenda. Yes, and Alcyon works with the Dark Fleet, the German breakaway. So, um, and they are humanoids as well. So you, you never know who who you meet. You can. It's yes. difficult. Well, it's difficult. It's very very important, and I'm I'm sure that will stir some debate by those that are you know, yeah. very great fans of uh, George Adamski and and uh, others from that fifties uh, era. So let's move on to uh, section six. Sharing and seeding of technology above the lesser evolved races' evolutionary capability of understanding is prohibited or taken to the necessary minimum. Quote from Thoran. This clause allows the introduction of technology above the understanding of the stage two species only and strictly when it is considered as crucial for the preservation of the said species. This process must be included with 
programs in agreement with the High Council of the Galactic Federation of Worlds and completed in the greatest discretion with a restricted number of representatives of the said stage two culture, end quote. So hey, but, this, yeah, this is about sharing and seeding technology, yeah. Very important. So, so that means that, uh, you know, like right now, for example, uh, there is technology that is being shared, uh, we believe, by the Galactic Federation with uh, the US Space Command on creating a some kind of uh, impenetrable satellite grid to prevent infiltration by the Orions or the reptilians that are wanting to, or at some point might want to re-infiltrate the Earth, uh, that they've been cleared for now, but at some point they might come back. And so the Federation is helping Earth's Space Command come up with this kind of uh, planet-wide grid uh, using advanced satellites so that nothing can come through without the permission of the U.S. Space Command and its allies. Yes, uh, absolutely. And that also reminds me about the, the, the program that have been um, created in cooperation with the U.S. Navy in the 1950s, mm -hmm. if I'm right. And... Uh, the, the Galactic Federation ignite, if I, well um, created this, this, started these programs of cooperation, and uh, to my understanding, these programs had for purpose to give to help us develop our proper technology, our proper defense against extraterrestrial invaders, which were so much more powerful and advanced. We had no chance against the Orions and the, the reptilians. We had no chance. So the Galactic Federation gave us a chance by these programs of cooperations and acting the same way, always giving us clues and crafts. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's my belief that some crushed crafts were just gifts, you know, because... I mean, these, 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 these craft are so, that's, the technology is amazing. They would come from so far and just crushed, crush, you know, that doesn't make sense unless they are attacked or, you know. They, I think some crashes were just gifts to give us and not saying, oh, here is a craft. Hi, how are you doing? Here's a craft. It's a gift, blah, 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 blah. That, that's contact. So just send one, crush it and let them find out. You know, that, mm -hmm. that's the way they do. Yep, that's a very good point. Uh, I, I know uh, William Tompkins, who was one of the people that revealed the Navy's secret space program, he said that the Navy set up a special studies group during the Second World War to look at the craft that had been recovered from the Los Angeles air raid incident in February of 1942. And, and Bill Tompkins said that that there were two craft that were recovered. And he said that the, these were a gift from, he called them the Nordics. The, he called them the Nordic extraterrestrials. But I, I believe what he was really referring to was the Galactic Federation, that, that that's probably, uh, and that is the mode by which they operate, that they, they would give technology uh, like that, that we could understand uh, and, and kind of develop. Yes, so that, 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 that's really important because they, they give us a technology that is beyond our understanding without infringing any law. That's very tricky, very mm -hmm. fine and precise. They really play around with the prime directive. It's very well, well done. Yeah, I think this uh, particular uh, clause is, is, is section is very, very interesting because it, it says that because I think one of the earlier articles said that you, you cannot give technology that is above the level of, of a civilization, one, one of the earlier articles. But this one qualifies that by saying that when it's considered as crucial for the preservation of the said species, that's, that's the key. And, and that during the Second World War, uh, the reptilians were helping the Nazis. So this, I believe, was why 
the Galactic Federation was able to crash. And Bill Tompkins said that they were two drone extraterrestrial spacecraft that the Federation allowed to crash in the Los Angeles area. One was recovered by the US Navy, one was recovered by the US Army, and they were taken for study. And, and out of that, Bill Tompkins said, uh, began the whole kind of reverse engineering program that led to you know, not, not just the Navy, but also to the Air Force developing secret space programs, that that came from that 1942 incident. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, it's exactly the way, the way they, they, they proceed. And I may read again uh, a part of the Torrance commentary because it will make more sense now. Um, so this process must be included within programs in agreement with the High Council of the Galactic Federation of Worlds and completed in the greatest discretion with a restricted number of representatives of the stage two culture. So in great discretion with only the minimum of people, in great secrecy, and it, is, it, it has to be included in programs that have been agreed by the, the, the Council of the Federation. So that's done really, really well like this. Well, well that did happen with uh, the Los Angeles air raid incident and other incidents where this kind of uh, process was used, that only a few people learned about it, that it was covered up. And of course, the, the military and the intelligence communities uh, worked on these technologies without revealing it to the rest of the public. So yeah, that definitely, that seems to have been the principle that was used. Yeah. So section eight, oh, sorry, section seven. It is forbidden to interact or communicate with any native resident of a lesser evolved planet or culture using any device, appliance, machine, tool, weapon, or invention representing an improvement upon the science and technology already in existence upon said planet. Quote from Thoran, this relates to unauthorized individual communication with members of stage two culture. So this is about uh, illegal communication uh, without any authorization. Okay, so that's very interesting. So unauthorized individual communication. So does that mean, for example, that uh, if the galactics uh, start using uh, some advanced technology to communicate with a citizen on a planet like on, on Earth, using radio, for example, uh, that, that, that that was forbidden, that they couldn't do that? They, yes, I suppose. I suppose it's about, um, it's about communication, unauthorized individual communication. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I suppose, I suppose. Yeah, there's, a, there's an example of this. Uh, I'm struggling to remember the, the name uh, I think Robert Renault, Robert Renault, he, uh, he was a contactee and uh, he was a ham radio operator. And he said that he started getting uh, radio communications from um, a galactic organization. And, and he wrote a lot of material about, about their, their culture. But now I guess the galactics or whoever was in, in contact with Bob Renault, uh, they were in contact with him through a ham radio. So they were using their technology on their ship to interact with his ham radio. So I guess that's okay because they're not using something more advanced or, or is it not that's okay? It. That's it. No, I think it's okay because I was re reading it again. Um, I may read it again. It is forbidden to interact or communicate with any native resident of a lesser culture etc. Using any device, appliance, machine, tool, weapon, or invention representing an improvement upon the science and the technology already in existence upon the planet. So if they communicate, they need to use the local ways of communicating of the, the, the culture, not devices that would show um, higher technology. So I suppose 
uh, you know, communicating by radio. You remember this Ashtar uh, TV uh, uh, hijacking in the 1970s. They were just uh, using the local uh, TV emitter, I suppose. Uh, you know, things like this. Um, there are a lot of contactees like me who receive uh, telepathic contact. The device I have in me, it's a higher technology, but that has been put in me without their consent. Uh, they they re reattuned it, they recalibrated it. So, but they still are allowed to communicate with me. I suppose it doesn't display any technology because this implant that I have, for instance, as an example, is of a higher density. So you can't see it, catch it, have it, examine it. You, you, it, it wouldn't change anything because you, you can't get the hold of it in with the, the existing tools. So uh, that wouldn't cause uh, interference, you know, um, in the understanding of technology or something like that. So that's why there are many contactees who receive contact. But if technology is involved, extraterrestrial technology is involved, then uh, openly that can really show this technology. I think that's a difference. That's not allowed. I understand it like this. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, like the, the implant that you have, like um, it's a higher density implant. So yeah. uh, like an X-ray, you're saying an X-ray wouldn't pick it up. No, I have had so many X-rays and scans and nothing. I see. It could see, I see. nothing. Okay, so nothing. so it's not something that would, that would be seen, wouldn't be known. So it's really a, a technology that's undetectable using our yeah. modern scanning devices. So that's acceptable. But... I Things suppose. like um, implants, like I know uh, many people uh, that were abducted and had implants put into them. Now, Roger Lear, he used to be a surgeon that would remove these implants. And, you know, the big question was, well, are, are these grey implants or are they kind of military implants? I mean, people always assume that they were grey implants, but, but if the greys abide by the by the prime directive does that mean then that these were kind of military implants put in there to track gray abductees well uh i believe uh, all the physical ma material in our density implants are made on earth Mm -hmm. because by and you know the the, the my lab uh, military uh these people, they work with the greys. So they work mm -hmm. together. So the greys are going to abduct people for them or, you know, things like that. Uh, they work together. Um, the greys abduct, abducting people, it's against the prime directive, of course. But think about this. They um, remove the memory of the abduction. And uh, the, the implants they, they put, they're not you cannot detect them with the material, the, the, the technology of the planet. So there is not, no interference. They don't break the prime directive, if, even if they break it with abducting people. But as long as it is not known they, they, that they have, have abducted a person, for instance, they abduct someone, and it is not know, known, uh, the Galactic Federation won't know about it and the person won't remember anything and won't have any traces in, a, in the body that is detectable. Uh, maybe a few marks, but then, you know, that will disappear. That won't change technology of the planet. But then that's illegal, of course, to do that. So that's why Thoran and his team and uh, there are many crew, many, many uh, crews of the, the Federation who were really working dedicated dedicated to rescue people from abductions because that was abduction is illegal but they do that well they do that that it doesn't interfere in the culture and the civilization in any way wiping the memory and uh, leaving no trace you know they they really play they navigate in it the grace oh good well thanks for clarifying that now we go to 
section eight, spiritual and moral knowledge should also be restricted to a bare and necessary minimum only using communication methods and devices at the current level of understanding of the lesser evolved race. Quote from Thorhan. This stands for itself as words. It is about not telling members of a species directly what they have to do, nor revealing the true nature of the universe, unless they are endangered. In this case, and in accordance with the decision of the High Council of the Galactic Federation of Worlds, it is authorized as part of an official program to work at speeding the development in consciousness of the said species. Okay, this is so, uh, an article. Sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, I would just want to say that so it's about um, interfering in the the spiritual understanding of the universe and uh, the, the, the wisdom, the, the evolution in wisdom of a species. Um, that's, um, yeah, that's very interesting because, I mean, this brings up the role of religion. And, of yeah. course, uh, our planet is divided in terms of major religious geographical regions, actually more, more planetary. Some of the religions are world religions. So if the Galactic Federation or any extraterrestrial civilization suddenly starts coming here and revealing spiritual knowledge, there would be, uh, would be if, if it wasn't done correctly, it could lead to war, really. I mean, by different, you know, one nation, if they were contacted by a, an advanced extraterrestrial civilization and they got some spiritual knowledge and started to talk about that, another nation uh, using, you know, from another religious tradition uh, might say, well, this is contravening the word of God and you know, you, you're, you're heretics. And so we're going to declare holy war or whatever. So, yeah, I guess this, this is really saying that when it comes to spirituality, religion, uh, the Galactic Federation really keeps a hands-off approach. Yes, totally. And I have a very good example, example with um, Val Thor. Uh, who said to, to me, I just asked once a, a, a question about, uh, about religion, uh, Christian religion, and uh, why uh, did he let some people write uh, about him uh, that he would confirm certain religious beliefs uh, as extraterrestrials so are not into earth religions. He said, because at the time, this religion was very important and part, a very important part of the society and the identity of the, the earth people at, in this, in America, in this place. He said, and we are not uh, allowed to interfere in the beliefs. We need to let people discover themselves what the universe is made of. So we need to go along with their belief and not contradict. So that's what he said. So that goes along with it. Okay. Yeah. Very important article, that one. Yeah. And something I imagine in the months ahead or the years ahead, as the extraterrestrials start to reveal themselves, as the Federation uh, knowledge of it becomes more known, it's going to be challenging, I guess, as people are going to want to know, well, was Jesus um, an extraterrestrial? Was he a baby dropped off? I mean, that's one of the questions I have as well. You know, was no. was G was Jesus a drop off? You know, like we uh, dropped off as a baby because I think uh, there are certain races that that do that. Um, actually, that's one of the questions that I. That's a good one in terms of what we've discussed so far because I know I've come across cases like um, there's a case. It's called the Aztec. UFO case uh, that was in 1948 and it was a, a, a crash of a craft and it had human looking extraterrestrials and there were like um, I think there were three or maybe five three three living babies on there and the the surviving adult said that this these babies were supposed to be a gift for humanity to to help you in what is is coming so is is this one of the ways in which uh, the galactic federation operates dropping off babies um so that that culture raises those babies in their own 
traditions. And then at a certain point, the babies you know, become adults and they have a, a deeper understanding of technology, ethics, cosmology, spirituality, and so forth. That, yes, I I, um, I read about the, the, this story, um, and uh, that that would fit the um, the programs. When uh, it is in one of the section, it is said that you can give technology and help a, a civilization if it, this civilization is endangered, but it needs to be part of programs and be done in a certain way. So I suppose um, I've never heard about any other cases to where babies are, are brought into uh, adoption, but I think that is clever in a way because these individuals have been uh, growing up, learning everything about this culture and really knowing everything about it and being part of it. And this, what best way than to know a culture and in all its, its aspects and then from there, uh, adapt the knowledge uh, regarding to you know putting it really in in balance um that's how i would understand it mm -hmm. well now we go to section nine it is not permitted to make contact with or interfere with lesser evolved races unless they are threatened by an outside source in that case, it is the moral obligation of the personnel of the Galactic Federation of Worlds to evaluate the situation to determine a suitable course of action. Quote from Thorhan. That is what has happened with Terra Earth. This section refers to using the Section 1 as a legal implement in a conflict with a third party. A stage 2 world non-member of the Galactic Federation of Worlds interfered in any mean by a stage three interstellar civilization is legally entitled to request assistance to the Galactic Federation of Worlds. In this legal proceeding, the Galactic Federation of Worlds has for duty to disclose its existence by making contact with official representatives of the threatened stage two culture and offer assistance. If consent is officially given by the said stage two culture to the Galactic Federation of Worlds for receiving assistance, the Galactic Federation of Worlds is therefore given the right to expel and punish the interfering stage three culture. So now I think that's where we are. And uh, I think Thorhan, I know he was referring to uh, the Greta Treaty and uh, Eisenhower episode and the MJ-12. Um, that say that um, if a civilization is threatened by, um, let me let me see it again. If it, a civilization is threatened by another one of a stage three interstellar, um, the people that are invaded from stage two, they are legally entitled to ask for assistance to the Galactic Federation because they're invaded by an outside threat. And that's very important. As invaded culture, we are entitled to request for assistance. And if we do it officially, the, the Galactic Federation has for duty to uh, kick out the, the invaders from the planet. Uh, otherwise, they need to do otherwise. That's I think that's how they, why they, they did all these programs of cooperation. You know, um, that's I think that's the key. We are entitled to uh, request assistance, and uh, it's all about consent. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean that's an important point. Is yeah. how is that request made? I mean, is it made? in some kind of uh, collective unconscious desire or wish because in the case of our world of course we know that the mil military industrial complex made agreements with the greys so is that is that and and so it's not the military industrial complex or the secret government that is requesting assistance it's more the people i mean who, who exactly people. would would be making the request in a convoluted situation like our planet where we have different 
groups that are competing. Some have made agreements with the Greys. Some have made agreements with the Nazis and the Fourth Reich. And, and, and the, the rest of us are kind of kept in the dark, but some of us kind of know enough. And we say, well, we want the Galactic Federation to intervene. So how does the Galactic Inno uh, Federation mm -hmm. do something? You know, how does it intervene? So since uh, there are um, agreements that have been made in the uh, recent years with uh, the Galactic Federation, some what we call the White Hats uh, have made this agreement with the, the Galactic Federation for assistance and work together more officially. But uh, so that's, that's really started uh, a cooperation and request for assistance of assistance official request for assistance but the thing is um we may have request assistance officially with the the some government the, the governments now but you know it's not this doesn't stop the the grace for instance to keep on doing abductions so um it's also up to the people to say i do not consent to be abducted this is my right i am entitled to say no i do not consent and i'm entitled to ask for assistance and this is what i see at an individual level when i say to people when you are abducted by grace when they beam into your house say out loud i do not consent to be abducted i never consented i never did get out of my house and it works people write back to me oh my god it works it worked and they never came back because it's all about consent that's why the greys they don't want us to know about this special clause nine of the prime directive because and i've been bothered with uh, since that has been given to me uh, when when we know that we, we are in our rights not to be abducted, that uh, they infringe a law and a law of consent. If we say we do not consent, they back up. Because if we say we do not, I do not consent and they still abduct you, whether you say that, then they infringe a law officially. So that's what the Greys have done uh, in their uh, conquest all over the galaxy. They first get the, the, the people to consent and sign to be invaded. Then there's no laws infringed. The prime directive is not infringed because the people is, agrees and signs, yes, please come here and we give you uh, facilities and etc. and we consent to be invaded, basically. So that's what they do. It's a trick. Yes, um, I know uh, President Eisenhower very much regretted the fact yeah. that uh, he was a signatory or, or agreed to the Griata Treaty to uh, giving the Greys permission or whether it was him or whether it was uh, the Majestic 12 group, someone gave the, the, the Greys, the Orions, permission to start abductions and, of course, you know, that creates a lot of problems. But the encouraging thing here is that as this information becomes more widely known, as people hear this, then they can say no to, to that kind of intervention. And that gives the Galactic Federation more of a opportunity or more of a right to intervene and, and to stop, which I, I think is what, what has happened, right? I mean, this is yes. what's happened over the last couple of years. Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've been said for, I've been told for years uh, that has really officially started. They started to intervene physically. Well, I mean, the Earth Alliance uh, fighting in the, in the undergrounds, uh, in space, you know, uh, it, things have just jumped to a, another level. And this, this really um, goes with matches with uh, White Hats, White Hats, we, we call them, or some governments making agreement with the Federation. That was probably the famous uh, official request of assistance, something the, some, somehow the wind changed a few years ago and things really got serious and uh, open, open, you know. But we yeah, need the, to the, do it, uh, yeah. 
Sorry. Yeah, there definitely seems to have been um, some major, well, I guess a series of events that began to happen. Um, I, I guess it was around 2017. I mean, the, mm-hmm. um, the Trump administration began and things began to really accelerate there with you know, the creation of Space Force and uh, more information began to came, come out. A lot of whistleblowers were coming forward. And probably earlier, I, I think uh, 2014, 2015, uh, you, you, you have uh, different insiders talking about secret space program. You know, the secret space program information really kind of like took off in 2015. And so I guess that was part of the, a, a part of this, uh, of this awakening. And we, we know that, uh, that some of the groups involved in that are related to the Galactic Federation, to the Andromeda Council, and so forth. Yes, yes, yes. I think the wind changed at that moment, and official uh, request was made, and uh, I mean, association, alliance, alliance, alliance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we go to the final section, section ten. Federation personnel may not violate this prime directive unless they are acting to right an earlier violation or an accidental contamination of said culture. This directive takes precedence over any and all other considerations and carries with it the highest moral obligation. Quote from Thorhan, this warns against banishment from the Galactic Federation of Worlds community if members of a culture part of the Galactic Federation of Worlds infringes the Prime Directive three times, end quote. Okay, so kind of like three three strikes and you're out. Yes. <laughs> That's, yeah, kind of funny, but not really, yeah. but yes. Yes, okay. so that, that's it. Okay, well, you know, some might interpret that as being very generous. That uh, I know, you know that that uh, an, an extraterrestrial civilization may uh, interfere or violate the prime directive, you know, not once but twice, and 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 then if they do it a third time, then they're out. But but definitely, uh, there is repercussions for violating the the prime directive and and expulsion from the Galactic Federation. So why would a world a civilization fear being expelled from the Galactic Federation. Well, you know, what would be the consequences if a world violated, you know, Section Ten, and they were expelled? What, what, what would be there? What would they be facing? Yes, um, I think that the, the three times uh, it's like a safety because sometimes you may interfere by ac- accidentally. You know, uh, that may happen. So that does it worth really being? being expelled you know so being expelled means stop sharing knowledge with everyone because when you're part of the galactic federation you have access to uh, knowledge and technology uh, put in common every species put in common their knowledge if some species uh, know a secret about i don't know um, some technique technical detail they are they have the duty to share it with everyone it's uh, really transparent Uh, so you wouldn't have access to this uh, sharing of knowledge anymore if new knowledge comes in you won't have access to it or new technologies developed you won't have access to it Um, when you are in the galactic federation and that is why they are urging us to be part of it when you are in it, you're totally protected. Um, it, it is not possible to attack a world or attempt to invade a world that is a member of the Federation. You can try to uh, invade a world that is not a member of the Federation. You take risk and you, 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 you can do that, but then you face consequences. But if this world is part of the Federation, you, you, won't, you won't do it because if you do it, you have the whole feder- it's the federation that you attack. Not it, it's the whole structure. So once you're in, you're extremely well protected, defended and defended and officially allowed to share technology to, to access incredible galactic technology and all of this. 
So, so those are the 10 articles that make up the, the prime directive of the Galactic Federation of Worlds. So now they've been released, and, and you were saying that uh, some of the species are the, the greys, the nebu, don't want this information uh, yes. coming out. So now it, it is out. Now yes. it's something that people are going to be hearing about. So what, what, what do you think will, will happen as a consequence of, of the release of this document? People will become aware that they have the right to say no legally. They have the right, they, they, they are not slave. They officially, they are officially not enslaved to the Nebu and or the, the reptilians or whoever. They are free because they are under the protection of the, the, the Federation because the Federation has made alliance with Earth. And because of this Earth alliance, it has, it proves that it, there has been this um, request of assist for assistance and now uh, working together. So as knowing this, knowing that uh, we, we, are, we have the right to, to, to say no officially, not to consent to be abduct, abducted because uh, if you are abducted, it's really against, really against a law and you have the right to say, no, I do not consent. And the other needs to go. You need to, to understand that. And so knowing that it is really officially, it's a legal official, there's a legal official document about it. And by, by whom, by, by which all, all of the civilizations, obviously in the galaxy, um, uh, abide to, by, uh, Obviously, the greys as well, and the greys are not part of the federation because it's a moral law. It's, it is said at the start, moral and eth ethical uh, guidance. They, they recognize, every, everyone recognizes uh, the law of free will. It is said it is a universal law. So I think that it is, that's what it is about in the, the background of it. So knowing this now, we know our rights. As a galactic species, we know our rights. And that's what the greys don't want us to know. Well, I know you have a, a book coming out now. I mean, it's coming out, uh, is it uh, September 6th? And, and so that this uh, presentation comes, this uh, video is being made available pretty much uh, to coincide with the book. So why don't you say a little bit about your book and, and what, what what the book is covering and the title and so forth. This book follows up the, the first one, A Gift from the Stars. It is uh, everything that I have witnessed uh, after writing this book and the contacts I've, I've had. And especially, uh, it's especially centered around contacts I have had with uh, Commander Val Thor. Uh, some conversations I have had with him and also conversations I have had with members of the Galactic Federation and a few journeys in the star system and a few points, few, few explanations that go further in further details about uh, who are the tall whites, uh, the different types of Nordics, the different structures in this galaxy, going more in details and uh, a lot of uh, other things, but it's uh, galactic contacts and uh, encounters with Valthor. So we will never let you down. It's the title, and um, it will be available uh, Tuesday, seventh of September, uh, on, on Amazon first and other platforms afterwards. Well, that's that's wonderful. That's very exciting to have another book out, and and I'm very interested in finding out about your contacts with. Uh, uh, Valiant Thor and any additional information he has about the time uh, he spent with uh, President Eisenhower and what has happened ever since. People are very interested in that. So I'll be intrigued to read that book. It'll be something that's, that's uh, going to be an important addition to the, to the knowledge. So, well, Elena, I, I want to thank you for uh, coming on the show and sharing uh, this very important document. And 
the best way for people to access the document? I, I guess I'll, I'll make it available um, on my website as well. And, and do you, will you make it available? Um, where will people be able to get the document? Can they, is it in the book? Or? Yes, it, it will be in the book with uh, also with Thorhan's commentaries. Uh, so I will publish it in the book. And, uh, but you can also uh, find it on Michael Salah's website um, um, as a free copy uh, to read. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I'll, I'll put it. I'll put the the principles up the the ten articles up on my website so people can go there and read it for themselves. So again, I want to thank you, Elena, for sharing this very important update, and we definitely look forward to a future where uh, humanity gets to openly interact with uh, the Galactic Federation. Yes, humanity of Earth will live long and prosper. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. In my upcoming September 11 webinar, Our Star Trek Future, I will discuss how the 10 articles of the Galactic Federation of Worlds Prime Directive compares to the fictional Prime Directive of the Star Trek series. The secret role played by the US Navy intelligence assets in briefing Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, means that the resemblance between the prime directives of the Galactic Federation of Worlds and Star Trek are much more than coincidental. Learn more about our Star Trek Future webinar at exopolitics.org.